Well, good morning, everybody. Um, hope everyone's doing good today. It's the first day of distance learning, so I wanted to record um, a video just to go over what my expectations are going to be for you um, and maybe to clear up some misconceptions and hopefully ease some of your anxiety about all this. So um, the first thing I want you to do before we even get started is I want you to take a deep breath, just like we do in class. I want you to close your eyes. I want you to have a little woo moment, you know, put your fingers up like this and have a little Zen moment. Okay, close your eyes deep, breathe deeply. It's going to be fine, okay? Please remember that all of your teachers are doing this for the first time. So there's definitely going to be some bumps in the road while we all figure out exactly what it is we wanna do, what's the right amount of work, what's too little work, what's too much work. We're gonna figure it out. So I'm just asking that you don't get stressed out and please be patient with your teachers while we all figure it out, okay? So uh, I made a little presentation. We'll go ahead and get started with that. Um, so the first thing um, I'm gonna tell you is what's on the agenda for today. Um, we're gonna have a brief overview of what's involved with the distance learning. Um, and then I'm gonna talk to you about the things that you're gonna be required to do specifically as it relates to my class. Um, and then in conclusion, I'm gonna give you some um, pointers and contact information and stuff like that. So let's go ahead and just dive right in. Um, let me move this picture out the way. Okay, so um, the first thing that I wanna remind you about is that for distance learning, you wanna make sure that you're logged in using your student credentials, um, which is your student number, it's a, your, with the S, at stu.pombeachschools.org. Um, there's a couple different ways that you can accomplish this. If you're using a Chromebook that you got from the school, um, then it's a no-brainer because you just log in with your student credentials and everything will be logged in already for you. Um, if you're using a home computer, it can get a little tricky because if you already have a Google account, like a personal one, then you know you might find yourself with some issues being logged into both those things at the same time. There's something called profiles you can set up on Google Chrome. Um, if, if anybody is having that issue where they can't seem to stay logged into their student account, um, send me a message and, and I'll, I'll tell you what to do in terms of the, the profiles. Um, I, I know I run across this problem quite frequently because um, I have my own Google account and then I have my school one and I'm, I'm constantly jumping back and forth between them at home. So, um, so the next thing I want to talk to you about is um, just some tips for how you can be a better distance learner um, and kind of like stay on top of all the stuff that you're going to have to do. It's, it's going to be a new experience for you. So, you know, you're going to have to give yourself, cut yourself some slack, you know, and, and, and figure out what, what routine works the best for you. There is a schedule that's established by the school. The schedule um, tells you basically when the teachers are going to be available to meet with you for live instruction, or if it's not instruction, it'll be a live video meeting. So you can like link up with your teachers and ask questions, et cetera. Um, and you'll be expected to do something for your classes every single day. Um, now, what that something is depends on the teacher, depends on what um, the content is in the class, what assignments you've already had for the week, et cetera. Um, like I said before, we're all trying to figure out what's the, the best balance um, in terms of how much work we're assigning. Um, so, Something I can tell you that will that will certainly help you um, in terms of keeping yourself organized will be to use an agenda or use your Google Calendar if you're not already doing that. Um, so if you're in Google Classroom, which you should be for every one of your classes, as your teachers are posting assignments, it should automatically be creating calendar um, events for you on your student Google Calendar for when those things are due. So that kind of takes some of the work out for you because it's already gonna you know, tell you if you go to your calendar what you have for that day. Um, so, and if that's not happening, like if, if teachers are, are not adding a due date for some reason, um, you know, or, or you wanna change the due date because you wanna get a certain thing done sooner or something like that, 
then you'll you'll want to get some spend some time figuring out how to use Google Calendar um, and and you know customize that to your liking. The tutorial that I have linked right here, um, this link right here on the on the slideshow. I'm going to highlight that. Um, this tutorial right here. It goes over um, how how to uh, one system that you can use with Google Calendar and Google Keep um, to keep track of everything that you have to do. And um, the link is is right here on the slide. I'm going to post this PowerPoint along with the video so you can go back and click on it if you need to. Um, okay, so some frequently asked questions. Um, you guys have been blowing my phone up, which is which is great. I, I'm not complaining. I, I would rather that you be, you know, asking questions and trying to find out what you're supposed to do rather than just, you know, not participating at all. Um, so um, I, I probably written a lot of you back and said, you know, just be patient or wait for your teachers to give you instruction. And, and that still holds true. Um, but but I'll give you some information about what we're doing. So a uh, first first question I get a lot is what exactly are we doing? What what is the distance learning? What does it entail? Um, so every teacher is kind of taking their own approach with with what they're doing. Some teachers are going to hold live class and then expect you to log in at that particular time of day and 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 consume you know the class at that point. Um, some teachers will be pre-recording what they're going to be teaching you so that you can access that video anytime and, and kind of do it at your own pace. Um, some teachers might have a mix of that where they have some, some live sessions, some recorded. Some might be posting materials that are already done, like, uh, you know, like Khan Academy or YouTube videos or something. Um, you know, it all depends. And then the, the one thing that unifies us here is Google Classroom. So you should you should already be uh, a student in a Google Classroom for every one of the classes that you're enrolled in. So if that if that's not happened for you already by today, um, you should definitely t go to your student email and send an email to your teacher and ask them what's happening next. If you're in a Google Classroom like you are for me, for example. Um, you know, you can just rest assured that when when I need you to do something, I'm going to post it in Google Classroom because everybody will get the same message at the same time. OK, um, next question I've gotten a few times is, do we need to have a webcam in order to do the Google Meet? So the answer is no, you don't need a webcam. Um, if you checked out a Chromebook from the school, then the webcam is built in, and so is the microphone, so you're good to go. Um, you can you can join the Google Meet on a cell phone. So most of you, if not all of you, have an iPhone or an Android that has a camera and a microphone. So you can join that way if you want to use the video feature. Um, you should still be able to see your teacher without a problem. They just won't be able to see you. Um, so, but if you go on, if you access it from a regular computer, like a desktop or something, and you don't have a webcam, it's fine. You, you don't need one as long as you can access it, um, and, and access the video from the teacher. That's, that's what matters. Uh, is there a Google Meet happening today? Because Tuesday, today is the first day of the distance learning or the virtual instruction or the digital instruction or all the different terms that we're using to call this. Um, the answer is yes, uh, but there's some caveats to that, and I'm going to go over that on the next slide. Uh, one more thing that I, I didn't write this on the slide, but what something else that you need to make sure you're on top of is accessing your student email um, and doing that at least a couple times a day to check for you know things that your teachers are posting or sending you uh, because they may contact you through your student email as well. Okay. Um, so what do I do and when do I do it? And I'm going to make my video a little smaller so we can see everything on this screen here. So um, the first thing is I want to tell you what the requirements are going to be for, for my class, whether you're in Algebra 1 or Advanced Topics. It's going to be basically the same for everybody. Um, the first thing is every single day that there is school, so if it's not a holiday or something, um, you're going to have to complete a daily check-in form. And the reason for that is because I still have to take attendance. 
Um, I'm expecting every single one of my students to interact with my class one time per day at a minimum. And the way that I want you to do that is by completing this check-in form. And I'll show you in a moment what the Google Classroom will look like. Um, it'll be pretty easy for you to follow along, I think. Um, so you, you shouldn't get too disorganized. Um, but I definitely need everybody completing that form on a daily basis in order for you to be marked present. Um, if I mark you absent in SIS, then that means that I did not get your daily check-in form here on Google Classroom. So um, if there's any questions about that or anything else on this, you know, just make sure you send me a, uh, make a comment about it on Google Classroom or email me or get in touch with me, all those other ways, and we can, we can go from there. Um, I'm going to be pre-recording all of my instructional content. So um, every topic that we're going to go over is going to be a pre-recorded video, not a live session. Um, I'm going to post those on Google Classroom so that you can access them at a time that is convenient to you. And I'm going to post assignments that go with them. I'm trying my best not to overwhelm you with a lot of content and not, not overwhelm you with a lot of assignments. Um, so, and, and given those, those, uh, like those that I'm making it not so difficult, um, I am expecting a hundred percent participation and I think that you should be able to rise to that occasion. Um, the third thing I want to tell you is about the live class sessions. So there's a schedule that's posted for this. I'm going to talk about that in a moment, but the, the live class, the Google meet session for me is optional. I'm going to make it available during these specific time periods so that if you are in that particular class or if it's an office hour day and you want to just, you know, come in during that time period, if you have questions about something, if you just want to hang out for a few minutes and see how things are going with me or tell me about your day or whatever, um, that's totally fine. Uh, I will be there. I will be available, but it's optional. Um, if you never want to do any of the Google Meets ever, I'm totally fine with that. What's what's more important to me is, is that at the bare minimum, you are watching the videos I post and completing the assignments for them and also doing the daily check-in form. Okay, so let's talk about the schedule. So the school came up with this schedule. Um, it's over here on the right-hand side. Um, so Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays are considered instructional days. We have a, uh, a seven period schedule, just like we would kind of on like a normal school day. Um, you'll notice that the time for first period started later than, you know, regular school started. So that's a benefit. Um, and we don't end the day really much later than we were before, um, only by like half an hour. So, um, so for example, on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, if you are in my period one advanced topics class, I will have the Google Meet room open from 8.30 to 9.15 for you to come in and ask questions. Or if you, you know, want to interact with the other people that are in that class, if they also decided to log in, that's cool too. Um, but I will be there and available for you if needed. Um, and then period two would be from 9.25 to 10.10, period three, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, the Tuesdays and Thursdays are reserved for office hours. What that means is that your teachers um, will be or should be available during those time periods um, to meet with you if needed. My Google Meet room will be open. Um, you know, I, I may, I, I'll be there for sure, you know, um, if anybody needs anything. Um, but it'll only be on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 1030 to 130. Um, but before that and after that, the Google Meet will not be open. Um, so if you needed to get in touch with me, you'd have to send me an email or, uh, you know, send me a remind message or something like that. Um, and I can interact with you that way. Um, so another big question I've been getting is what is the code for Google Meet? So as a school, we agreed to go ahead and use um, like a similar naming convention for all of our Google Meet rooms. So this code should be the same for your other teachers in terms of their name and the school number. So mine is it's the last name of your teacher and then their first initial and then the school number, which is 2631. Um, so what you would do in order to access the Google Meet 
during these particular time periods is you would open a new tab and go to meet.google.com. And then over here uh, in the middle of the screen, yours, yours may look slightly different from mine um, because I don't believe that student accounts are able to start meetings. I think you can only join. So yours might say like uh, enter a meeting code or something like that, but it's, it's basically the same thing. So you would click on that button and then you would enter that code here. And it puts you in sort of like a, like a waiting room. Um, you can kind of check out your camera settings and your microphone settings and make sure that that's functioning properly before you actually join the call. And then when you're ready, you're gonna go ahead and hit join now. Um, I, I really, I honestly do not know what this interface looks like from the student side, so yours may look slightly different. I'm not sure if students have the capability to present or not. Um, I, I believe the answer to that is no, so you might not have a button for this, present, or if you do, it might be not clickable or something. Um, but basically, when you're ready, you would just hit join now, and you're not going to see this because I'm the person creating the meeting, so let me just close that. And then, um, you know, the, your video would show up here. Um, if you've never used Google Meet before, it's a, it's a pretty simple tool to use. Um, on the top right corner up here, you're going to see um, the little people icon. If you click on that, that's going to tell you all the people that are currently in the class or in the meeting. And then you can also click on the chat icon. If I go back out, it's the little bubble with the words in it. If you click on that, you'll have the chat functionality here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just give everybody this blanket warning now so that you have this information um, ahead of time. The First of all, all of the Google Meets that we host will be recorded. So if you do something that is inappropriate, like on your video stream or if you type something in the chat, it's going to be 100% associated and trackable back to you, the student. Um, and disciplinary actions will apply if you do something that's wrong or inappropriate. So I just want to throw that out there now that um, we're not going to have any shenanigans or funny business happening in these video calls. It's an educational tool, and this is an opportunity for you to demonstrate your maturity as a student. So, you know, take advantage of that, okay? Um, the other thing I want to tell you is that the student code of conduct that we follow in the schools, they that still applies even though this is distance learning. So any anywhere that you're interacting with class or with educational tools, whether it's Google Meet or you're filling out an assignment or you're making a comment somewhere on a Google Classroom, any of that um, is basically um, traceable back to you, the student. And so you wanna be very mindful of what you say, how you're saying it, the, the language that you're choosing to use. I, I already had to, to kind of comment on a student's posting this morning in Google Classroom um, for using a particular word. Um, so you just you just want to make sure that you're using appropriate language um, and 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 you're being respectful to your classmates and all of your teachers. Um, you know, it's it's very easy when you're at home sitting behind a keyboard, um, especially if you don't have your video turned on. You know, to kind of write something that might be very, you know, like full of attitude or snarky or just whatever. And, and you know, you, you have to be cognizant of the fact that when you write something down like that, it could be misinterpreted by other people. And so you, my best advice to you is just to use, use clear, calm, rational language 100% of the time and save all of your, you know, snarky comments and stuff for, you know, social media or a friend or just, you know, some other some other arena. It's it's not going to be tolerated by me in any of our, our online platforms. So um, so anyway, let's let's turn this back to the the how to use the tool. So um, that's basically it for Google Meet. You can mute yourself on the bottom of the screen. There's a little microphone. If you click that. It tells you at the top the microphone is off. Um, my video is not working because I'm already using my webcam to record myself for this screencast. So, but normally you could turn your camera on and off also here. Uh, when the meeting is done, you can just click on the little hang up button um, and the meeting is over. And once 
everybody has left the call. Uh, if and, and I, the organizer, leave the room, you will not have the capability to rejoin the room anymore. Um, once the organizer has left, it's kind of like closed off until I open the room up again, okay? All right, so let me go back to the slides here. Um, one more thing about this Google Meet code, it's not gonna change. So every class period, every day, until this distance learning thing is over, this is gonna be the same meeting code that you use every single time um, to join the join the call. And if, it, if you're getting an error or something, there's ways to troubleshoot that, and also it could also just be that I'm, I'm not in the room, so you're not going to be able to, to join the call. Okay, so um, let's talk for a moment about what the Google Classroom is going to look like. So I made a test class um, to kind of just, first of all, I didn't want any student information to show up in this video. Um, and also I just wanted to kind of pare it down so you would just have a little highlight of what, what a particular day would look like. So when you go to Google Classroom, um, the very first thing it brings you to is the stream. This is a, uh, like a chronological list of all the things that a teacher would post or students would post in the stream. If I write an announcement right here, that's going to pop up here in the stream in chronological order, in the order that it was posted in. For that reason, I really don't like using the stream to access assignments. Um, it, you know, if, if you are a student who is completely up to date, and let's say today is a brand new day, and the, the only thing you haven't done for this class yet would be the brand new assignments I'm posting right now, they should be right here at the top on the stream, and you, you won't have a problem accessing them. But it could get confusing if you're like a couple days behind or something, and you're trying to find all the right stuff. So the best thing I can tell you is to always go to the classwork screen at the top of the window. And I'm going to have everything organized here by the day of the week. Okay, so at a bare minimum, there will be a, a category for every single day because every single day you have to check in. There may not be a video or an assignment for that day, but you at, at, at least at a bare minimum, you must use the check-in form and check in with me for attendance purposes. Um, so there will be, will be a topic for every single date that we're doing online learning. Um, as you can see, the check-in form is right here. It's posted as an assignment. It doesn't have a grade. Um, if you click on this, your screen is going to look different from mine because uh, this is my teacher view, but it's, it's going to be kind of similar. You're just going to access that daily check-in form. It's going to pull it up for you. I want you to put the date that you're checking in for, your first and last name, the class period that you um, have me as a teacher, have me for class, and then at the last question, I just want you to let me know what you're working on that day. So um, you might be watching lectures and taking notes for, for my class um, or working on a homework assignment, or you might be doing something else. So, and if you are, please use the other field and, and put something. Um, just let me know. You know, you might be totally caught up with my class and I might not have posted anything new on a particular day, and you might be doing stuff for another course, and that's that's totally fine. Um, I'm not gonna you know hold it against you for working on other classes classes work or anything, uh, but just please use that other feature and just type something in this field to let me know what it is you're working on, um, so that we have a good a good monitor for that. Uh, once you're done, you would hit submit, and you'll get a copy of your responses in your student email, so you'll know for sure that you checked in. Um, so also, if I post a video, it will be posted under as a material on here. Um, you can, I think you can just click right on the video and it will pop up. Here's a lovely YouTube video for you guys for today. For some reason, it's not loading. There it is. <laughs> okay, closing that. So um, there's your video. And then finally, if there was some kind of assignment um, for that particular video, it would be posted in here. Um, most likely what I will have for you guys is going to either require you to print something out or use some blank paper um, to write the problems down and work the problems out. Um, and then you're gonna use your phone or your Chromebook or your webcam to take a picture of your work and upload it here onto Google Classroom. If you are in my advanced topics classes, we've been doing this the whole school year, so this should be nothing new for you. Algebra 1 
you haven't really uploaded anything here before. Um, so it might be, you know, some growing pains there. Just, you know, if you have questions or you're stuck, just let me know and I can post a tutorial or find you a video or something on how to do it. Um, the other thing is too, if we, if I post a video lecture, uh, that would involve you taking notes, um, I'm going to be asking you to upload your notes, uh, and I'll be counting them as a grade. So um, that's that's not listed on this screen right here for Tuesday today because there's really nothing to take notes on. But when we have our first instructional day tomorrow on Wednesday, there will be a lecture on there, and and in the lecture it it will um, it will have an assignment for you to take a picture of the notes that you're taking and upload them. Um, number one, it's a it's a completion grade for getting your notes done, and number two, it's to you know for me to make sure that you're actually watching the material and taking the content down. Um, so that's basically it for how to get through the Google Classroom. Um, right now, I haven't put any restrictions on you know you guys as students sharing things on the discussion board. Um, if you go back to the stream, it should be at the top of your of your screen here. You can you can click here and actually type some stuff in and share it with the class and ask for feedback. Um, I'm fine with that. Use it as a tool. Contact each other. It's it's okay with me if you're you know confused about what the assignment is asking for or whatever. Post there for clarity. You may not be the only one with the same question, so it would be beneficial for you to come here to the discussion board and post it in Google Classroom rather than sending me a private message um, because your your question may apply to multiple people. Think of this um, as sort of like raising your hand in class because the question you're asking would, would affect everybody. Um, if you have something to ask me that is just related to your personal grade or something like that, then yeah, of course, you just wanna you know, private message me about that um, to let me know. So uh, let's flip back to the PowerPoint here. Um, so I think that's uh, everything for how we're gonna be conducting class. Remember all of this is kind of subject to change, but I'm, I'm pretty confident this is gonna be how we're doing it. So um, if I flip to my next slide here, I put a bunch of ways to keep in touch with me. Um, so obviously you guys know you can send me an email anytime. Um, just go to your student email to do that. Uh, you can contact me via phone, voice, and text. You can call or send a text. This is my Google Voice number, so it's not my real phone number. It's this is like through the school district. It's through my um, my student my teacher account. So um, you know it's all tracked and everything. Uh, we can video chat via Google Meet. Um, so that'll be during the office hours and and also during the virtual instruction days, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Um, so uh, we also have Remind. We've been using Remind all school year, and I've been sending reminders out through that to remind you when things are due. Um, if you haven't already joined the Remind for your class period, go ahead and do that now because, you know, in, in especially this situation of distance learning, you want to make sure that you're always as in touch as you can be so you don't miss anything. Um, and the code that you're going to use to join our class will be my last name, which is Dansby and then P, like for period, and then the period number that you're enrolled in. So period one students would, in, would, would use the code DANSBP1 and so on. Um, I have a Twitter account, a teacher Twitter. You can follow me here. Here's my Twitter handle. And then finally, uh, obviously, you need to be involved and enrolled in our Google Classroom so you can turn in assignments and access the content that you're going to be learning with us. Um, so, so that's, that's everything I wanted to cover with you today. Um, so, so to give you a, a quick overview of what you should be doing as far as next steps right now, today, Tuesday, March 31st, after you've watched this video, I really need you guys to go on Google Classroom and go ahead and do that daily check-in form. Um, and, and that's going to be it for today. Um, I, I am going to open the Google Meet Room. So if anybody wants to pop in and ask a question or something, um, you know, it'll it'll be there. It'll also be recorded. So if you if you miss it, um, you know, I'll post it on my Google Classroom um, under Google Meets and then you can you can see, you know, what you missed. Um, so that's all I have for you for you guys today. Um, so keep keep an eye out for future lessons I'm going to post here. And, you know, you know how to get in touch with me if you have any questions. 
And that's it. Have a great day. Don't be stressed. It's all going to be fine. It's a learning curve for everybody. Um, and, and, and just, you know, smile and be positive. All right. Talk to you guys later. Bye.